Adventureland, American Ultra, Cafe Society. Well, I think it's safe to say that we now have the unofficial Jesse Eisenberg, Kristen Stewart trilogy. Hey everybody, this is 22 Tiger Dude here and I'm here to review Cafe Society. So Cafe Society is written and directed by Woody Allen and the film stars Steve Carell, Jesse Eisenberg, Kristen Stewart, Corey Stoll, and Blake Lively. Cafe Society is about this man in the 1930s that moves to Hollywood to make his dreams big and Steve Carell plays his uncle so his uncle could give him the opportunity to make it big in Hollywood but then he falls in love with his uncle's secretary played by Kristen Stewart and so from there Jesse Eisenberg and Kristen Stewart they fall in love and you want to know something you guys that's not even the entire storyline so Cafe Society was a film I was actually very interested in and I'm a sucker for films that take place in the early days of Hollywood and this film takes place in the 1930s. This honestly looked like my kind of movie when I watched the trailer. So now that I've seen Cafe Society, I have to say I really enjoyed this movie. I was very entertained from start to finish with Cafe Society. This is a funny movie, this is a clever movie, and it portrays 1930s Hollywood in such a brilliant manner. Like, this film does a great job of showing what 1930s Hollywood is like and you actually feel like you're in 1930s Hollywood and that's something I really liked about Cafe Society so it felt cool to be very immersed in this world that Woody Allen has created. I was actually very surprised by how funny this film is too. This actually has a lot of well-written dialogue that is both funny but it's also dramatic too when the film needs to be and that's a credit to Woody Allen and he also does narrate this film. I thought Woody Allen's narration was very great. It, it gave it that more classic vibe, I guess you can say, when you hear his narration. And there are some great performances here, like Jesse Eisenberg did a really great job of playing this man that moves to Hollywood and make it big, make his dreams come true. He still has that quirky Jesse Eisenberg personality that everyone's known for, but he does a great job of still using that to this film and I thought he did a really great job. I thought Jesse Eisenberg, to no surprise, was great in Cafe Society. Kristen Stewart, who's honestly been winning me lately, her performance was really great. I used to not like Kristen Stewart, but I'm at the point where I actually really like her as an actress now, honestly. She really is growing on me. Steve Carell, I thought, did a really good job as portraying Jesse Eisenberg's uncle, which, funny enough, this is a role Bruce Willis was originally going to take, but to no surprise, because of Bruce Willis being difficult, according to IMDb, Steve Carell ended up taking what was originally going to go to Bruce Willis. I could see Bruce Willis doing this kind of role, but I think I'm glad that it went to Steve Carell because I think Steve Carell was more fitting for this kind of role, honestly. And it was really refreshing to see him in this kind of movie. So I thought Steve Carell did a really good job. Blake Lively, of course, just beautiful as always. She's really good in this film. Not in this film that much, however, and it does take a while for her to actually appear in this movie, but for the moments you do see Blake Lively, she's wonderful. And then Corey Stoll as Jesse Eisenberg's gangster brother. Wow, he was so entertaining, honestly. And this might be my favorite role from Corey Stoll, to be honest, because he has been in great roles. He's not necessarily the best in Ant-Man, but he's been good for what I saw. And I have to say, out of all the roles, Cafe Society might have my favorite role from Corey Stoll. He was funny, he was entertaining, and man, him and his other gangsters, they do not 
give you a break. They just freaking grab someone and take care of business. And I have to say the parents in this film, the parents were also very funny in this movie as well. They had some of the funniest dialogue surprisingly. And I do feel like the romance plot between Jesse Eisenberg and Kristen Stewart was handled very well. And it is something actually pretty different in how they handled this romance story. And something I'll say about Cafe Society. It's a very unexpected film, like, uh, a lot of things I was not expecting, and I'm normally someone that can predict when something's gonna happen, even if I love a movie, I can predict what's gonna happen next. With this film, I can honestly say, it's very unpredictable, and that's not a word I normally say a lot, but this was actually an unpredictable movie. A lot of moments that happen in this film, I actually didn't see coming, and then when I would predict one thing, something else happens. I'm all like, okay, wow. Wow, that's not what I was expecting at all. So this is a funny movie, but it's also a movie that kept me at my toes because of all of these turns that it would take. And of course, the music in Cafe Society is absolutely beautiful. It definitely fits the 1930s very well. And of course, you want to be accurate when you're portraying a movie that takes place in the 1930s. So the music here was really great as well, to no surprise. It's just beautiful and it really fits the movie. There aren't a lot of problems I have with Cafe Society. I do have like a few and one of my problems with this film is that the first half of the cinematography honestly wasn't that good. I'll say that. The cinematography, it didn't really get good until like the second half. Now of course in the first half it would have good shots here and there, but I didn't think the lighting for the cinematography was that great and that's surprising to say because Woody Allen normally has good looking movies uh, as far as the ones I've seen at least, but in this film I thought the first half of the movie for the most part didn't really have that good of a cinematography. The lighting really wasn't that good and it honestly really distracted me. And honestly if I wasn't into the characters and the dialogue and some of the funny moments that happened, I could have seen myself not really liking this film because it was a huge distraction. But luckily, I had good characters, good dialogue, and all that stuff to keep me from being even more distracted from the cinematography. Luckily, yes, the second half, it does improve upon it. There's better lighting and all that stuff, so luckily it does improve by the second half. Also, yes, this is a very funny movie, but I will say there are a couple of scenes, just a couple of scenes, that I did feel like Woody Allen would drag on and on and on just to make the scene funnier, and it does doesn't really do that. And really the last problem I had with Cafe Society is that yes, the ending can be abrupt to be honest. How the movie ended actually was very nice and it was honestly pretty risky on how Woody Allen ended the film and that's credit to him. It's just that how it ended, you know, it did feel abrupt and how it cut to the end credits was like, Okay. So overall, you guys, I thought Cafe Society was a very entertaining movie. I thought it was a solid movie, to be honest. I really enjoyed it. From the characters, to the dialogue, to some of the cinematography, to the look of the 1930s Hollywood. I thought it was well written by Woody Allen. I thought it was directed well by Woody Allen. I thought everyone gave it their all with the performances. So I'm going to give Cafe Society three out of four stars. So you guys, in the comments down below, let me know what you think about Cafe Society and what is your favorite film by Woody Allen. I mean, the guy has one movie every single year. So yeah, you know, you have a long list. Thank you so much for watching, you guys. This is 22 Tiger Dude here, and don't forget that I will always have Tiger Power.